Praise the Lord, friend Thomas Manton IV. I want to talk about uh, something the Lord's speaking to me about the last two days. I had a visitation from the Lord on the uh, night before last, and uh, it was startling. And I got to say, I've never preached on this subject in my entire ministry. I haven't that I can remember. Maybe years ago, you know, during revival, some rev extended revivals, I might have alluded to it, but I don't, I don't ever remember making a top, uh, a title, you know, like this. I want to speak about, the Lord wants me to speak about. I want to speak about the subject of repentance. I felt over the last 30 days that God is really convicting his church. And just now I was driving somewhere and I'm looking around at the different, uh, People in society and everybody's all tattooed, full of the devil, you know, perverse lifestyles, different color hair. What's going on in our world? What is going on? Uh, somebody's not bringing up families in the faith. You know, you almost wonder in a Christian country, would someone dare to say that it's not a Christian country, but it is, America is that we've lost the tenets, tenets of the faith uh, and people in their lifestyles have gone all kinds of crazy. Now there are movements to try to say that, uh, you know, I'm saved anyway, you know, no matter what I do. And, you know, who are you to judge me and all that? And here, here's a, here's a, here, look, this is amazing because the confirmations I'm getting. They're, they're like smoke shops now where they sell these things to smoke, which they say are also as bad as smoking. You know, those fake uh, things, smoking? Well, I don't know what they call it. And, and there's one, is, it says the, the pink plumber, the pink something. Pink. I mean, what is that? Is that, you know, what is that about, you know? Well, what kind of color is that? Uh, wow, and people are, are just... You know, seem lost. You just wonder, like, is it gonna? How hostile is it gonna be to Christianity after a while if things keep going the way they're doing? I gotta say this. I'm speaking to the church. I'm speaking to preachers and leaders. And the only thing that you need to do as a number one priority is keep getting closer to God. Oh, I feel this thing like rising in me, like I'm gonna just break out in tongues or start crying or something. I I feel this, I feel that I, ah, boy, the, the Lord is, the Lord is looking for uh, people to return to him. And I want to entitle this uh, repentance, restoring intimacy back to your life and removing evil, which will launch you into your future. You know, when you connect with God, and really, 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 really get deeply intimate and connected with the Holy Spirit, what will happen is beyond amazing. You know, some people think they're connected. Well, I'm saved, you know, by grace, through faith, through the confession, and, you know, the grace of God is upon me, and everything's okay. And, and, and meanwhile, you don't have the power of God you don't see the anointing, you know, the kind of miracles to like raise the dead and uh, bring miracles of healing and deliverance to people. I, I remember meetings that I had where, where God moved in such a way where people couldn't get off the floor for two hours. I mean, if they had a schedule to do something else, too bad, man. You know, it wasn't happening. People, I remember we had daytime meetings. And uh, look at these people crashing into each other. Lord have mercy, what world are we in? Everything's going on. I mean, what I just saw, I can't even believe, show you these, these people coming out of these shops and they look like, uh, there was one phone shop, a major phone carrier. I was gonna go in to look at something. I just decided not to go in because I saw this guy walking. He looked like a creature, like completely possessed by the devil, completely demon possessed completely like legion walking like you know bent over like this and he had the, the company shirt on and i'm gonna go in and let him touch my equipment and my phones excuse me
stopped. <laughs> I'd have to look for so hope for someone else wasn't there. I've gone into shops like that that are just the whole atmosphere is just wrong. This is what is what's going on in our day. It's not that you know anything evil is new, but it seems like it's it's all stepped up a notch. You know, it's all gone to a higher plane. There's that pink van driving in front of me. Could you imagine? Are they on the other team, you know, doing, you know, doing, doing some business? I've never seen anything like that in my life. And it has the symbol on it, you know, that, that round, the ribbon thing. What is our world coming to? You know, like Pentecostal preaching, you know, real fire and brimstone and holiness. That's not popular. I mean, you preach like that, you'd be by yourself in the church. People wouldn't want to hear that. I... I know one lady is talking about like she can multiply money and she has this new thing. She just got saved. And she's real popular online and, uh, and, and, and really blowing it up and was very abrasive and annoying, I think. But just out of curiosity, I was looking a little bit. And then also I'm deleting a lot of people off my social media because it's just not interesting to look at. Sorry to say, if it's not, if it's not good... Uh, I don't have time for it. It's so much, you know, flying through the air with all kinds of stuff going on. I'm just clearing the clutter, okay, so to speak. Things I don't want to look at, I'm not going to look at. And then there's another guy, and he don't have anybody on, and he's preaching this deep doctrine, really mad at, you know, dead religious people, and he's always going off on against them. And he doesn't have anybody following him, and I'm like... And I know him. I know him. He wanted me to come to speak in his, uh, in, his, in, his in his ministry. Uh, great guy, but so I, I I have to say that what I've experienced the last few weeks, the Lord has been really, really showing me uh, what His conviction is. Conviction could be a foreign word to most believers. The conviction of the Holy Spirit will come to a believer. Not to the world, uh, always. Okay? But to the person. That everything in your life, everything from A to Z. Oh, the sun in my face. Huh? Everything from A to Z. You know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, D, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. From A to Z they say in England, right? A to Z. You know, God goes through everything in your life. God, this is powerful. This is deep. It's, it's awesome. It's painful. It's real. It's necessary. Do you, want, do you want God to, like, you know, push you to the side on the, on the day when you rise to, uh, before the seat of Christ, the beam of seat of Christ, and they say, well, you know, you were good at this, but there was a lot of other things in and you're like, oh my God, didn't I see that? Why don't you fix it now? Why don't you fix it now? I think, I'm telling you, I'm God's prophet, okay, to the nations. I want to tell you, thus saith the Lord, God is cleaning his house. And I'm not saying it in a negative way. I'm saying it in a very motivational, positive way. You know, these people like God's cleaning his house and, you know, and then, and then they want to, uh, they want to talk about, they just passed that funny vehicle. Maybe you see it in my river. Wait a minute, let's see if I can. Yeah, you see that? You see that? You see that? What color is that? Ha <laughs> ha! I don't think that's the right color for that business. Must be some funny business. Anyway, anyway, you, you saw it. Okay. Anyway, moving along. You know, like and the people think, well, people should be shot down. You know, and they're against other people that are believers. What spirit got in you? To think like that, if you if you think like that, or what spirit got in these people that they hate their brother, that they just consider them like an infidel or of some other tribe? No, we're of the tribe of the Lion of Judah, and people need to get their issues fixed. You know, you understand? Now I know there are people that are way out of line and their things, are, but you don't. You're not supposed to hate them. You're supposed to love them. Galatians six one says that when you being if you if you're the spiritual one. You're going to help restore somebody that's having a problem. To reach out to them. Talk to them. Try to help them. Not, you know, someone said the only place where people, you know, kill their own is in the, is in the church, in the house, the supposed household of faith. 
That's pathetic. That's pathetic. You're childish. Galatians 4 1, another four, another first one of Galatians chapter. 4 1 says, You're really Lord of all. You know, he's Lord of all, we're Lord of all with him, but yet you just differ nothing than a child because you don't understand that you're the ruler. Okay? And we're kings and priests unto the most high. So we're supposed to deal with issues and take care of things. Hello. So I, I want to say, and many, I, I bet a lot of leaders have been feeling this because I know the Lord's, how he's talking to me. And I've been praying over this last month, from the middle of last month, and now it's the middle of this month. In fact, I think I've crossed 30 days. I think it's day 31 now, my prayer time. Yeah, it's, it's just past one, uh, one day past the 30 days when I started. And I'm feeling conviction. I'm feeling pain. I'm feeling sorrow. I'm interceding on behalf of people. I'm interceding on behalf of myself. I'm interceding on behalf of leaders and people in the church and, and societies, you know. The only way we're going to see a change is by a great spiritual awakening by the Holy Ghost. Okay? And the only way that that's going to happen is if our life is very intimate with the Lord. When He begins to come by His presence and counsel and word and His own manifestation of Himself. He's comfortable with you, how you are. Where you, and He begins to move. Another, another really sad thing, tragic thing, is how people can be gifted. People can be gifted, and they're all messed up. I really don't want to talk about that. There's a lot going on these days. There's a lot of things going on these days. I don't want to talk about that. You may be able to figure out a few things. There's a lot going on these days. You see people that have charisma, man. They got it, man. They're great. And then there's other things going on. So, I mean, and not that anybody's perfect, but hey, you just have to deal with it. But, but, don't, but don't pick up rocks and start throwing it at your brother or your sister. Try to see what the issue is and try to fix it. Anyway, that's another, that's another title. I'm, that's another thing. I'm dealing with the personal thing right now, the one-on-one, -on -one, the you and Jesus. You and God. Okay? Me with him, you with him. Because when his presence begins to come in tangible manifestation, wow. I mean, it's just, it's just a change. And when you feel pain and sorrow over any area or issue, it's a serious thing to contend with and to pray through. And I know that the power of God is lacking. The power of God is lacking. I have a lot of notes. I hope I'll do a part two on this. And I want to read through some of my notes and points and also make a book out of it. I'm already trying to work with the title. Because it's just something that it's just something that needs to be, you know, said. But I want to talk about repentance. You know, Isaiah fifty seven fifteen says, a contrite spirit God will not despise. In fact he likes it. Psalm 51, um, verse 10, talks about the contrite and the contrition also. David said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. I want to be right with you, Lord. That's the main thing. That's it. Because when, here's, here's, here's the benefit of this. And this is very good for every area of life. Success, prosperity, dynamic life, powerful results, answered prayers. Come on. All the things we say, we shout that we want. Um, you know, God begins to... Uh, God begins to really get close to someone who gets close to him. Remember he said, remember he said, uh, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Yeah? Draw nigh to me, King James, nigh. Do you say, oh, it's nigh thee? <laughs> uh, we don't speak King Jimmy, yeah? 1602, Elizabeth, Elizabethan English. English. And uh, uh, King James, he said he wasn't even saved, you know. Alexander Scorby, who read the Bible so well, the Englishman, 
the famous uh, narrator of the Bible, of the Holy Bible on tape that is sold millions of copies, I guess. I've listened to it, too. It's, the guy is phenomenal. What a gift. And they said he, he, they didn't think he was born again. I was like, how did he read the Bible and he wasn't born again? So King James supposedly wasn't either, but he, he, he saw the benefit of maybe some personal benefit for himself to make it in a translation. Back then, that everybody can get. Back then, only the church had the Bible. It wasn't cool for people in those days to have their own copy of the Bible. To walk around with their Bible, it was like people were killed for that. You know that was a, that was a no-no. Remember the Tyndale, William Tyndale, who who made that uh, version of the Bible. He was the one to print the Bible. They burned him at the stake. They burned him alive for doing that. After he made the Bible, he was martyred, burnt alive. You know, what I mean. So uh, those religious devils, they had some control on the whole thing, and maybe King James saw another way for himself to, you know, you know, these, 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 these rulers have these interesting quirks, you know, and I'm sure there was some personal motivation he had for doing that. But then everybody began to get the translation, and then later on the Bible began to be printed, but men lost their lives for bringing the word to people. That's how powerful it is. If you think the word's not powerful, you could say, well, why were men slaughtered and killed for bringing the word? Okay, And, of course, we need the Word, but, my God, we need to be close to God. You need to read your Bible. You need to uh, take time reading. You need to play it. I, I play the Bible audio every day of my life. Now, I begun that some time ago. Again, I used to do it, and I've begun it some time ago. I let it play while I'm sleeping. I don't care. There's people talking while I'm sleeping. I don't care. It's the word. I want the word. I want my, my ears to be hearing it all the time. So I'm at special topical scriptures on different topics, okay? And I'm playing it. I'm playing it. I'm listening. I'm, I'm taking it in while I'm sleeping. It's wonderful. And uh, But my God, we need to uh, be tr transparent with heaven, with God. Uh, not just, not people uh, all, the, all the time, because you you can talk to people about your issues. I, I found out sometimes a great leader, a powerful leader, who does he talk to about his own issues? There was a joke made. You know, this young preacher said to this old preacher, who was a great man of God, he was about 90 years old. The young preacher said to him, Hey, a uh, uh, great man of God, apostle, what, what can I do to, like, you know, have somebody to talk to about my issues, someone to pray with me about, you know, personal things and... The old man looked at him without a hesitation and said, Son, go out to the desert and find a jackrabbit. <laughs> Tell all your issues to the jackrabbit and hope, hope, hope that the jackrabbit will nod his head, you know, in sympathy. And then kill the jackrabbit, bury the jackrabbit, go back to what you're doing and carry on with your, with your thing. And that's like a joke, but you know, the point is, you can't trust other people all the time. I had a friend that prophesied to me. He's a pastor. He's a very nice guy in, in a certain city. And he had a word for me. And the Lord told me he had a word for me. And I pointed at him and says, you have the word of the Lord for me. Speak it. What is it? And he like got shocked. He bowed his head. He was like amazed that the Lord had me. He gave me a word of knowledge that he had a word. He says, it's amazing that I do. The Lord spoke to me so clearly something. I, I can share it. Uh, and he went on and I recorded it and it was very powerful very very accurate and some things of it are in are in motion already and then I called him one day and I said I wrote him a message I said pray for me you know pray how, how many of us ask someone to pray I was like what and he just did a little like oh lord bless my brother and thing I was like, come on are you kidding that's not what I'm talking about. We want to get in the zone in the prophetic glory and speak some things that'll happen. And let's prophesy again. Didn't happen just like a, you know, a general thing. And I thought, I'm never going to do that. I'll never ask that person again. I mean, and most times you, you can't do that. So when you have a prophetic time with other leaders or other prophets and apostles, really, really cherish that because that flows by the spirit. But that's not an everyday thing. Let me tell you, that's not, an every, that's not an everyday thing that's just going to happen all the time anyway. If you think 
and it's like a switch me on, switch me off whenever you want. Um, that can work in the realm of giftedness. But when you have a moment of glory and God's going to speak, take advantage of it and cherish it. I was just in a conference. I was ministering also in a conference. And um, there were other great, great, great prophets there. Oh, these prophets are just amazing. International people. Amer some Americans, some from other countries, you know, different continents, you know, Europe, Africa. I don't know, where else? Oh, my God. And they, uh, oh, Lord. And, and we put the mic on each other, you know, privately. Recorder, I mean. Not the, uh, the house mic, but the, our recorders. And, uh, or I recorded it, and they, they recorded too, on their, I guess on our phones, you know, or our, I have this other recording device. And the Lord uh, began to speak the most amazing details, and I have a really great person on my team, and typed it all out and read it. It's just astounding, the details. So, and then I had another uh, meeting down in uh, 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 a really beautiful tropical place. I was in a conference down there and had some times with other leaders. My God. You know, it's great to take these also and, 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 and replay them and reread them and speak them out loud and type them out and all of that. You know, because they're, they're rare and they're, they're, they're gemstones. They're, they're powerful and precious. So you, you need to do that. And, and my point, furthermore, is anything to do with your direct connection with God and His will and His assignment, that's the most important thing in your life. Anything you need to fix for the purpose of God in your life, you need to do it. Anything you need to apologize to Him for about not doing that you were supposed to do, that's important. Anything that you didn't do that you were supposed to do, anything that you did that you were not supposed to do, whatever it is, and I'm talking to leaders and I'm talking to real good people here, you need to do that because it's going to bring that glory more upon you. And I don't know what happened that maybe people think they're, they always think they're all right in whatever state they're in, you know, right now, and it's not true. It's a real deception. There's a time when you had more glory than that. I bet than you have now, I bet, not betting, but I mean, you know what I mean, I'm just as a figure of speech, there, 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 there's, there's times you've had great visitations, more than you're in right now, and God wants to bring it back, but he even wants to bring it more, more further, repentance, it'll clear the clutter in your life, go to God and say you're sorry. And thank him. Also, have gratitude and thank him for all the good things he's done for you. Very important. Have that humility in his presence. Have that reverence for him. Let the fear of God be your conduit in your channel. Love what he loves. Hate what he hates, you know. Love what he's done before. Don't forget about it. If things happen to you that were bad, and every, most, most good people have been attacked. I mean, almost, I mean, everybody. In, in horrific ways and you know you, you're not supposed to let that damage you a lot but in case something damaged you uh, you you got to get past that whatever it takes to get through the now season that you're in you have to get through it whatever you have to break my god I feel the anointing here oh whatever you have to fix whatever you have to sort out you need to do it you need to do it because God wants to build a huge platform for you. He wants to give you a platform that's like, you know, so high and so glorious. He wants to raise you so high. He wants you to bring the power of God to our generation. He wants you to do so much. And you have to have all of your life very, very intertwined with his power and his glory in that intimacy with him. So I'll speak more about this. I have some other notes I've written and I'm going to make a book out of this. I have never, I, and I mean never. I've talked about consecration. I've talked about, you know, prayer. I've spoken about all of these things. And some years, over the years, you kind of forget like where you've been and, you know, I don't remember all of it, but we recorded quite a, quite all, a, a lot of stuff, and we have it. But 
the uh, this 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 title, this thing about conviction, this thing about repentance, this thing about Lord God, I am so sorry that I let this happen. I am so sorry, Lord, that that I allowed anything wrong to be in my life. I'm so 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 sorry. And whatever that is, and that fits in different ways for everybody. That that fits for everybody. That's there for everybody. So <laughs> I'm going to the gym. I'm praying and I'm in day 31 now in my prayer time and I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. Father, we thank you for your grace, your graciousness to us. We thank you for your mercy. We need your mercy. For You are good and your mercy endures forever. Your protection, your glory from all evil in this world. And Lord, you've given us grace to walk through anything that's adverse, anything that was wrong, anything that was evil, anything that had ill intention against us, and I'm speaking to everybody across the board in a wide shot. Uh, whatever it is, God is big enough to get you through that. And what he began, he will finish. What he started, he will bring you to and through, through and to, where, where he wants you to be. He who has begun a good work in you will perform it. And God wants your heart. That's what he wants. I saw a meme one time, a, a caricature, like, drawing of this. It said, it's really touching. I, I had it, I have it in my archive somewhere. I have to find it. I really like it. It made me cry a little bit. I thought, oh, this is so sweet. It's like a stick figure, you know, drawing of people. And this guy, he had his heart in his hand. And the Lord was there. And he came and he had tears in his eyes. A little skinny, you know, stick figure guy with a face, you know. And, and he said, he had his heart in his hand. He said, Lord... This is what I have. This is all I have. That was the main. Th or you may have something else, but the main thing I have is, is my heart. It was in His hand, and like the Lord said to him, like He was so touched and said, "That's what I really want." Anyway, God wants your heart. Oh, I feel the presence of God here. I trust your feeling, Father. Let a fresh wind of your favor and fire fall upon my friend. Lord, let all the junk in this world just become a distant nothing let everything that has attacked them be broken and shaken off let everything that they allowed wrong decisions wrong trust all loss comes from misplaced trust all damage comes from people you trusted that you shouldn't have and wrong decisions wrong decisions mistakes love we're in this world we're human fix us fix it and let your glory come back in the house. Let the visitation that comes sometimes, let that become a habitation in a place with you and us that the world can come, the world can come and be saved. And we can come to them and get them saved. And a place where we can hear you, a place where your favor is. You know, we preach about favor and success. Everybody wants it. But do you know the price of it? I saw one man that's a, a really seriously wealthy guy. And he's famous now. He worked hard. And he's, him and his wife were doing a video. And she even said, you see all this stuff. And they had their jet and their cars and their, you know, their, all their stuff. And... You know, he said, this is not to brag. This is just like a, it's a trophy of what we've accomplished. And it's things that we use, you know, it's like in, in our life, you know. And, and he said, you don't know the hard work, how much I worked to get to this place. You know, that's a principle that works in every area of life for everybody. How diligent are you? The diligent hand makes rich and the slack hand makes the want. And that's the same in the spirit, in the natural, in business, in ministry, in church. And there's a scripture also that says to work to till your land, till your ground, work your field. 
Work your land, work your land, work it, work it, work it, work it, and you'll, you'll be prosperous. So what does it take? It's going to take work. What does it take to be intimate with God? It's going to take time in His presence. What does it take to get your life right? You're going to have to fix some things. You're going to have to just say, God, help me. And let's, let's attack this and address this and fix this and get this thing right the way you want. It seems simple, but it takes work. And the Lord is, uh, is, is, is bringing his conviction for, to bless you. He's bringing his uh, this feeling of a, a, a pull to you to bring you to, back to him. In a very strong way. In, in, and I'm talking to leaders. I'm talking to preachers. I'm talking to preachers that can preach paint off the walls. I'm talking to teachers that can, you know, boggle people's imagination with how brilliant they are and how well they speak. God wants your heart, though. Don't ever forget that. And the intimacy will bring his presence. And his presence will bring power. And his power will bring deliverance to our generation, but first to you. First it starts with us. And that is the word of the Lord. I'm Thomas Manton IV. Thank you. Please be my partner. Help us in our world missions. We're doing a lot internationally. I want to ask everybody to sow a special seed the most you can, and I'll be very uh, happy to send you, if you're in the North, in the North American continent, by, by post will send you my great book on the benefits of excellence 40 diamond keys for your success and the power to create wealth that I teaching I did in a great conference I'll send you this as my love gift I want to ask everybody to sow a very very special seed please do that please do that. I know I mentioned partnership and like you know it seems so optional but right now I want to ask everybody to sow a special seed today or in the next 24, 48 hours, just get yourself together. You can do it right now. You can do it by Cash App. That, that will be on the screen. You can do it by PayPal. You can do it on my website on thomasmanton.com. If you're in Kenya, you can sell for your own blessing and you need it. Uh, by M-Pesa on 0792-320-780. If someone has a, a more substantial gift that you want to do we can give you our details if you contact us if you want to do something by wire okay and I had a great man of God tell me an instruction to do that so I have my details to you know to to help you if you want to do something substantial uh, for the work of the Lord for our ministry okay so private inbox me also you can send me a whatsapp on the same number plus two five four seven nine two three two zero seven eight zero that works for whatsapp and this it's a global community now by technology so don't worry about what country it is it'll it, it, it'll get direct to it'll get direct to to us okay oh seven nine two three two zero seven eight zero that's the m pesa and the uh whatsapp of course the same number but the area code the country code you need plus two five four seven nine two three two zero seven eight zero to whatsapp me a message or you can private inbox me here on this social media and send me a dm a direct message and uh i'll get it personally and i'll respond to you love you much thank you for hearing and thank you for obeying god thank you for getting closer to him because the world will become a better place because you're carrying his presence that's what it's all about in Jesus' name. And the world will be saved, changed, shaken by the power of Almighty God. But that glory has to get on your life first. And I pray it's happening more and more and more for you now as you uh, ascend up to God's presence in prayer and really get serious about loving Him, walking with Him, fixing everything in your life and getting yourself in the place of purpose for what he's ordained you to do in jesus name i'll be back at you with another message on this god bless you love you have a great day in jesus name love you i'm praying too for you amen and thank you for being my partner thank you so much blessings on you